Hello everybody, this is Tim once again, finally here with my Texas Chainsaw Mask review. I, re I just saw the uh, original film, uh, which I've seen before, that came out in the 70s. I watched it on Blu-ray. Watching it on Blu-ray kind of took away a little bit of the film's quality, its impact, because as, as everyone knows, this film has a really great, like, grainy, like, real-life look quality to it, that with the crystal clarity of Blu-ray kind of takes away from it just a little, but not... Not too bad. It's still a great movie, and I love this movie. And I'll just go ahead and say this is the best horror film that I have reviewed so far on my YouTube channel. And there's really not a lot I can say about this film that hasn't already been said. But I love this film, so I just figured, fuck it, I'll review it anyway. And I might as well, there's no reason for me to even wait till the end to give my score for this film. It's a 4 out of 4. I mean, <laughs> obviously, it's a horror classic. It's probably... It, I'd have to say it's either the best or the second best horror film ever made, or at least slasher film. Um, but anyway, jump right into the film. Uh, everybody knows that this film is directed by Toby Hooper, who I really don't think is a good filmmaker at all. He's only directed maybe, well, three films I've liked. I've liked Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this one, and this one happened purely by accident. I mean, it turned out so good purely by accident. I think he's even admitted that um, he was surprised by how good the film turned out. This film, it, it was just an it was an accidental masterpiece. I mean, you could just tell. Uh, as for other stuff that he's done, uh, Poltergeist, I loved it, but that's uh, really more of a Steven Spielberg film. Yes, I'm in the Steven Spielberg crowd for Poltergeist. I really think it's his film and not really Toby Hooper's. So that's my opinion. Um, other films that he's done is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which I like, but I still, I'll be honest, it's not a great film, but it's a good one. But other than that, he's not done anything. I don't even count Poltergeist. Like I said, it's a Steven Spielberg film. So only two films out of his entire career that, I li that I've even liked. And I really, just from that and seeing his other films, I, he's, I think he did one called Mortuary I watched on TV not too long ago. And it sucked ass painfully bad. And from all the other films I've seen of his, I've just gathered together that this film was an accidental masterpiece. And he's just not that great of a filmmaker. But anyway, jumping past the whole Toby Hooper thing, the film stars Marilyn Burns as Sally, uh, Jim Sidow as well the cook, uh, Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface. And uh, there's another actor in here that plays the hitchhiker, but I don't know his name. I don't bother to look up facts about movies before I review them. I just like to uh, do my reviews raw. But anyway, jumping straight into it here. Um, this, film, this film is fantastic. I love it. It's a basic story, uh, but it plays it fantastically. It's great. Uh, you get a basic setup in this fucking Texas town. These graves are being dug up, and people have been fucking making corpse uh, ornaments and shit hanging on, or decorations on sticks and shit in the graveyard. And they've been digging up graves and taking just parts of some people and taking entire corpses of others. And of course, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family, and they're fucking using them. Or the Sawyers, I'll just, well, the Sawyers. They're using them as fucking. Ornaments and decorations and shit in their house. Uh, they uh, they like to make bone chairs and bone lamps and put faces on lamps and shit like that that you you get for imagery in this film, which makes it incredibly creepy. Uh, but to kick into the film, Sally and her four friends. There's five. Well, obviously there's five of them all together. There's two girls and three guys. Her brother's in a wheelchair. His name is Franklin. And I don't know if it was just me, but I thought Franklin was really fucking annoying in this movie. I mean this. I know it's his character, but this guy, he just fucking annoyed the shit out of me. <laughs> but anyway, to jump into it, uh, they're heading to visit their old uh, grandfather's house, who, uh, well, and to make sure that his grave wasn't fucked with, they get there, and his grave wasn't fucked with. Sally checks it out, and then they head to visit his old house, and uh, they head there. Oh, before I, I can't believe I almost forgot the most, one of the, my favorite scene in the whole fucking movie. Uh, they're heading down the road, uh, they pick up this fucking hitchhiker. He gets in there, he starts, uh, they start talking about slaughterhouses and shit, while Franklin starts talking about it once again, he's annoying as fuck, keeps bringing it up, even nobody wants to hear about this shit, um, they're talking about it, the hitchhiker starts talking about it, shows them some pictures of some cows he bashed in the head, and, <laughs> like I said, this film sets its tone incredibly well, uh, and then, uh, he gets, uh, Franklin's knife that he's fucking with and starts cutting on himself. He gets mad, I guess, because they won't drop him off at his house or join him for dinner, which, to be honest, I don't blame him. Um, he starts cutting on himself. Get, uh, he, Franklin takes his knife back. Then he starts taking, he takes a picture of Franklin, wants like $2 for it. They say, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Then he like lights some like shit on fire and a piece of tan foil, and then they throw him out of the vehicle. He marks blood on the side of the van. What he was trying to do by marking blood on the side of the van, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's just to mark the van so he can find it later or something. I, I don't know. Well, he's just fucking crazy. That's enough for me. Um, so after that, they eventually get to their old grandfather's house. Well, Sally's and Sally and her brother Franklin's grandfather's house. Um, then uh, the couple. That's that. Well, well, the one of the boys and uh, the other girl are well. They're a couple. They want to head out and go swimming, I guess. And then they head around. This is one of the things I thought was a pretty big coincidence. Of course, the killer's house is like right next <laughs> to their uh, grandfather's house. But anyway, they head over there to go swimming. And they walk down a path, but then they see this, uh, they see the, the house over there, the farmhouse, and they want to, the, the, the guy, he gets the fucking bright idea to go, well, let's go ask him for gas. I'm like, what? I thought, I don't know, it just seems weird that somebody would just go randomly to somebody's house to ask for gas like that, but whatever. Um, I guess they needed it pretty bad. Um, he heads over there to ask for some gas, he fu well, I mean, it just feels a little forced to get him, just to get him over there to get him killed. But like I said, this film's still a four-star film, and any little nitpicks. There's a few little bad editing shots in the film, but uh, nothing in this film is not overcome by the sheer fucking terror and realisticness of this fucker. But anyway, he heads over there. Uh, the girl doesn't want to... Well, he finds a tooth, hands it to the girl. It freaks her out. Uh, she walks off. He heads in there because he he's hell-bent on finding some gas. He heads in there. He hears some pig squealing. It's pretty creepy, and it fucking turns out it's Leatherface, who's fucking squealing like a pig, and knocks the dog shit out of him with a fucking sledgehammer. Then his body starts jerking, the great death scene. He pulls him in there, slams the door. Everybody knows this scene who has seen this film or is a fan of it. It's a terrific scene. He pulls him in there, slams the door. Oh, and uh, before I forget to mention, the reason they're looking for gas is because they stopped at this gas station beforehand, and uh, Jim Sidow is there, and uh, he says he ain't got no gas. <laughs> So basically, they they were fucked on gas because of that. Um, so then the girl is like wondering where the fuck he is, and then she heads in there. Um, she, well, she looks around in the house, falls in some chicken feathers, uh, looks around and sees all these fucking ornaments and shit made out of human bones, and it starts freaking her out. She starts screaming her fucking head off. Leatherface hears it, runs in there, grabs her, uh, hangs her on a meat hook, which is a very intense scene. It's played great. This film has a really terrific realistic quality to it. I can kind of see why people thought this film was real. Because it's just so fucking realistic looking. Um, but yeah, uh, he hangs her on the meat hook. It's a great scene. And then he starts getting ready to slice up her boyfriend with a chainsaw. You don't see it, but it's intense enough to where you get the idea of what's going to happen. There's not a lot of blood in this film. But the intensity of it and the realism of it. And just the sheer fucking freakiness of it. Make up for that by landslide to the point where people think they see blood when they watch this film, even though there's hardly not any in most scenes, but maybe little droplets. But anyway, um, and so the boyfriend of Sally, I assume he's her boyfriend, they're not really going too deep, he pretty much is. Franklin keeps fucking whining through this whole movie about, what if that guy's gonna come get me? Whoa, do you think he can find us? Well, I guess they should have took his whining seriously, because they all end up fucked anyway. <laughs> But anyway, and like uh, like I say, he's annoying because uh, when they first get there, they all walk in. And he's well, he's gonna wash the blood off the vehicle, and then he comes in mad because nobody went to help him. I guess that's I guess that makes sense. He is he is in a wheelchair, in the film his character is. But then he starts screaming and fucking whining and laughing like a little kid and kind of fucking act up like a child, and it's just annoying. And the character just gives off an annoying vibe. I, I guess that's what the actor was going for. But anyway. So, uh, back to what I was saying, the boyfriend decides to go check and see where the fuck they are and what's taking them so long. He, of course, heads to the same fucking farmhouse. Leatherface kills him with the sledgehammer. Uh, he, well, he's dead, and then meanwhile, I'll skip a couple hours. It's dark, uh, Franklin's acting like a dick again, he doesn't want to let go of the fucking flashlight. Sally wants to go find her friends so they can get the fuck out of Dodge, but, the, they took the keys with them, one of them did, I don't know which one. Uh, Franklin acts like a big jackass. He doesn't want to give her the flashlight because she can't push him through the woods, but she decides to anyway. She takes him with them. They're fucking screaming their heads off for their friends. Um, oh, before I forget, when the boyfriend went out looking for the other two, he goes in the farmhouse and get a great jump scare where he hears some banging inside the, 
uh, the freezer and he opens it up and the, the curl that was hung on the meat hook fucking leaps out like straight at the camera. It's good and just the way it's filmed, it's very intense. Uh, I don't normally like jump scares, but when they're paced right and done good, they work. <laughs> But anyway, as they're going through the woods, hollering and screaming their heads off, Leatherface hears them, of course, comes at them with a fucking chainsaw, saws the shit out of Franklin. I think you get maybe a speck of blood here, but it's so intense and done so well in the darkness and everything, uh, shrouding the entire scene. It just looks great. Franklin's dead. I don't really give a shit, but it was a great scene. Uh, Sally runs the fuck out of Dodge. Uh, Leatherface chases after her. Uh, she falls down once, gets back up, heads get the fuck out of there. She goes into the Leatherface's uh, family's house, thinking it's shit. Well, she doesn't know it was his house. She's trying to find help, and get the fuck out of, the, get the fuck away from him. And I don't blame her. The guy's running around, wearing other people's faces. And Gunnar Hansen plays Leatherface in this film. He does great. He seems like he's killing people more for the fact that he's just so fucking freaked out that they're just in his home, that they're just there when he, they don't need to be there. And you get like up close shots of him just like pondering shit from the looks of it, and it's just done so intensely. And he's like just moving his tongue and. He just plays it great. I'll just go ahead and say Gunnar Hansen's my favorite Leatherface out of the franchise. But uh, back to the plot here. She runs into the Leatherface's house, think, doesn't know it's his house, trying to find help. She sees fucking Grandpa and Grandma up there. Leatherface chases after her. She leaps out the like window. Uh, I believe it's the window. Or it may be the door. I know she leaps out a window and a door in this film. Um, but she leaps out. Uh, she takes off. I believe it's a door. She like leaps at the door. She takes off, heads out of there. Or it may be the window. Fuck, I don't know. I just watched the film uh, yesterday and I'm already forgetting things even though I've seen this film a thousand times. I just get it confused because she leaps twice out of two different times in the film. Once in the once here and once in the climax. But anyway, so Leatherface is chasing after. Uh, she's hitting the road. I mean, the fuck out of there, like I said before, I don't blame her, I'd be running like a fucking streak of lightning, she's hitting the road, runs into Jim Sidow's place, uh, wants help from him, turns out he's fucking related to these crazy sons of bitches, uh, he hits her with a broom, it's kind of a little bit of pussy hit, the way he hits her, I mean, <laughs> I think she, if she would have probably, could, she probably could have fought back and got away, but he breaks the broom over her though and knocks her out, which was good. Uh, he puts her up in a sack, puts her in the vehicle. Jim Sidow's character is really interesting in this film. I mean, the way he plays it. It's like he's psychotic, but he doesn't want to be psychotic. He's kind of like the guy that uh, can pass for a normal guy. who I guess would be the one that maybe lures people sometimes. And at the beginning of the film, they're telling him when they're at the gas station if they're going to head there. And he tells them, nope, don't go there. Don't fucking go there, basically. <laughs> but they go there anyway. It's like he was trying to warn them not to go there because shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> but they go there anyway. Okay, so uh, he's got her in the vehicle. He's fucking jabbing her with a stick, laughing about it. But at the same time, he's trying not to laugh about it. It's like he's trying to be normal, but he can't. Um, it's a great scene. He takes her to, of course, back to the house. And the hitchhiker just made it there. He hitchhiked all the way there. Um, so they take her in the house. She's tied up. She wakes up. We get a... Uh, fucking dinner table scene where she's at the dinner table. Um, you get some really great intense shots here that are pretty fucking creepy with close-ups on her eyeball that are really unnerving. Well, unnerving, I should say. Not really creepy, but unnerving. Close-up shots on eyeballs just fucking <laughs> make me feel unnerved. But anyway, uh, they got her tied up there. She's like begging them to let her go and you get some crazy creepy shit with Jim Sidell. He's like, I don't take no pleasure in killing, but just something you gotta do. And <laughs> he's, but he's like fighting his urge to join in and laugh, like all the like Leatherface and the Hitchhiker. And the uh, Hitchhiker is walking up there, and he's like making fun of her. <laughs> For he's like making like making faces at her and shit like that, like making fun of her because she's crying and wanting to get out of there, and they're like torturing her. And Leatherface is wearing her boyfriend's face. Um, at least I believe it's her boyfriend's face. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's his face. They don't really call it out, but I think the hitchhiker says recognize that face or like that face. So I'm pretty sure it's her boyfriend's face. So you get that crazy shit. Uh, then they bring in Grandpa. The old age makeup on Grandpa is a little uh, silly considering this film has such a realistic vibe and tone. Because, I mean, he looks like incredibly fucking old. But it still works in the context of this film because this film's got some really macabre and crazy shit to it. And it's got a wonderful uh, like bulb flash sound to it. Like, <laughs> 
that was my impression. But anyway, it sounds great in the film. It works fantastic. Uh, but anyway, uh, they bring her over there and they want Grandpa to knock her brains out with a sledgehammer and kill her like he would uh, like slaughter an animal. He tries, but he's old as fuck. He's lifting. He can't manage to knock her out uh, or kill her or whatever. Um, so she basically gets away, fucking leaps out of there. Uh, she takes off running down the road. Leatherface and the cook chases after her. Well, the cook goes after her. I mean, not the cook, but the fucking hitchhiker goes after her first. And uh, Leatherface is not far behind. <laughs> so they chase after her. There's a truck driver on the road. Uh, he jumps out. Uh, well, she, well, he jumps out to see what the fuck's going on. She jumps in the vehicle with him. And, uh, and then they go out the other side. Leatherface is chasing after him. He hits Leatherface in the fucking head with a wrench. And Leatherface falls down and saws his own leg. Pretty good scene. I guess he gets to feel what it feels like to be sawed by his own fucking saw. Which is decent comeuppance if you actually think about it. Um, so they're running around. The black guy runs off. He fucking just books it out of there. Shit, he takes off faster than Sally does. Uh, you don't even see him again, I don't like. And then this other truck comes by. Um, this woman's driving and sees him and tries to slow down so Sally can get away. She jumps in the back of the vehicle. They fucking hightail it out of there. Another face is chasing after him. He swings one more time. Barely misses her. Um, she gets away and she's fucking laughing hysterically with blood on her face saying go 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 she's like so freaked out and tensed up and she's screaming and laughing at the same time she's like slightly psychotic she's gonna need some serious therapy after this shit's over uh, before I forget at the beginning of the film you get like a, a voiceover uh, where it tells you uh, basically this is basically the, the setup for the movie and it works really well and adds great into the realistic vibe that this film has uh, and then at the end, she gets away, and you got Leatherface doing a chainsaw dance where he's swinging that motherfucker every which way, and that's cue, bam, in the movie, and that's just where it ends. So, oh, fuck, before I forget, I forgot about one scene. Uh, the hitchhiker was chasing after Sally, and uh, when the trucker was coming by, um, first time they, first time she seen him, she got out of the way, the fucking trucker just mowed down the hitchhiker like, bam, like that, and it was just, it was a good scene, and I mean, I didn't have a problem seeing the guy go because he was a dick crazy ass motherfucker and the actor whoever the actor was that played him did terrific um but anyway uh back to what i was saying and then leatherface does the chainsaw dance and then bam in the movie and it this film is fucking fantastic this is uh this film may have been made it may have turned out so well purely by accident but i toby hooper he can direct i mean he can direct but it's like stylish and stuff like that. Being well, adding a certain style to it and flavor. I think all that kind of stuff and the realistic look and feel of this film happened purely because it was low budget and just because of the actors just being better than what they probably should have been. <laughs> Which thank goodness they were, because otherwise this film wouldn't be as like remarkably amazing as it is. But this is a terrific film. Like I said before, I don't think Toby Hooper is that good of a filmmaker, but I think he's an okay director. But like as for filming actors and putting like style together and story together and all that, uh, 90, at least good 50 to 60% of this movie was purely accident. Um, but anyway, this film is great. It's fantastic. The sequels, uh, they get worse and worse. Uh, the two remakes, well, the remake and the prequel I'm going to review as well as... Uh, as well as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Uh, but anyway, this film's low budget works terrific in its favor. To be honest, I would say buy the film on Blu-ray for the special features, but not for the actual film. I would say this film probably looks fucking badass on original VHS tape, because I'd say it's probably more intense and scary on VHS, with the lower like picture quality look to it and everything, that even adds more to the realism than the, the Blu-ray just fucking takes part of it away. But anyway... Um, as far as this film goes, it's great, it's fantastic, I'd give it four stars out of a possible four, and I'll see you again with another review, I don't know if I'll be reviewing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, 2 next, I mean, I will review it, and it will be on here, but I don't know if I'll be reviewing it next, but, uh, until I see you guys again with another review, I just want to say, hope you have a great day, and this is a fucking fantastic film, and it's still scary as shit, and like I said, I think it would be much scarier on VHS tape than his own Blu-ray. So I'll see you guys later until the next review.